What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back with the boxing clinic. Y'all know what it is. Shout out to the LDBC, the YTBC. We working. We're getting a little late start to the boxing grind today, but y'all, y'all know we on it. Final thoughts on Anthony Joshua versus Carlos Takeham and reacting to the weigh-in as well. Um, Anthony Joshua came in at 254 pounds of career high. Carlos Takeham came in at 235, 235 and a half pounds um, for this fight. He stayed in shape and stayed ready for an opportunity. Looks to be physical condition. That's good. He'll always stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. He's about to make a $5 million payday. He can retire off of this real talk. And um, I'm happy for him because I've seen him pay his dues. Fight Joseph Parker, Irish Mike Perez. He got a draw that we thought he won. And probably most people thought he probably beat Joseph Parker as well. He's been the bridesmaid each time. But, um, you know, he fight Anthony Joshua, whose previous career high was 250 pounds in his last fight versus Vladimir Klitschko. And uh, he had four more pounds that he's been running. And maybe he's starting to, um, you know, basically, you know, fill out a little bit and get his man weight. Your bones get a little bit more dense. He looks like a true, true bodybuilder. Um, people have speculated possibly he's on PEDs, but he's done Vada with Vladimir Klitschko. And I'm sure the UK AD is making sure he's clean as well. But you can never trust him unless he's on year-round Vada testing or year-round USADA, whatever you trust. Um, so I'm putting nothing past anybody because what other reason would he be scared to fight Deontay Wilder other than, you know, PED uses because y'all call him bum Scott, Beyonce Wilder, windmill. And if he's this bum, what's, what's holding De Anthony Joshua from fighting him other than the other fighters that stopped them from fighting Deontay Wilder for them, you know, you know, pissing or, or dropping dirty, whatever you want to say. But I'm hopefully that he's clean. I've done videos defending him saying that he's clean and maybe it's just genetics. You know, he was a lot smaller earlier in his career. And, you know, he fill out his mans. He's working hard every day. He's trying to become the first boxing billionaire or one of the first boxing billionaires ever. So, um, you know, he's working hard every day. He says he's running. And, um, you know, that added weight can get you in trouble. Like, it almost got him in trouble versus Vladimir Klitschko. If Klitschko would have pulled the trigger. He could have knocked out Joshua. Joshua didn't punch for three or four rounds because he was tired. And when you put on mass weight like that, muscle mass, muscle mass is never good when you're doing a sport like boxing that's highly, highly... Um, you know, concentrated on conditioning, you know, the added muscle, we've seen it with Jeff Lacey and a lot of other muscle hulk type of guys, muscle was made up of a large percentage of water, it's heavy, it wears you down, you're not flexible, it, it tires you out in the sport of boxing, and uh, he don't really, you know, plan on going a long time fighting Carlos Hagan, he probably plans to get him out here two or three rounds at the most, but if it does become a battle of uh, nutrition, um, he's going to be in trouble. I'm Carlos Takeham, you know, because I didn't do a prediction video on this. I don't think it warrant, warranted a prediction video because I already know the outcome. And I know I'll be the first one to say in the, in the heavyweight division. And now in this area, the one punch the one punch knockout is more amplified than ever. Um, but I don't think in this fight. But if I'm, you know, Carlos Takeham, you know, I want to beat the body. I want to survive. I still want to push the pace, not be too tentative and take certain chances. But the body will be my main attack making them miss, even if I'm not making them pay. And um, that's what it would be for me to tire them out, use my feet, press enough, you know, keep them on the offensive, miss, you know, make them miss and make them pay sometime and just keep them off balance when making them miss. Then, you know, circling, resetting, and then setting back up and maybe firing. Being first is really keeping them off balance and beating the body down and making them tired. I'm telling you, all that muscle mass on them is not healthy for him. But Anthony Joshua is just too big of a talent. For Carlos take him to have any chance, he take his five million dollars, lay down and go home. Hopefully, he shows a, a you know a heart of a warrior, a spirit of a warrior. He gives a valiant effort. But can you blame him if he doesn't give a valiant effort? He's a late step in. You know he's making five million dollars. I mean, um, he's gets all eyes. He's against the cash cow in the heavyweight division in the UK. Anthony Joshua. He's holding this man hand and already making the mutual agreement right here. In my opinion. <laughs> That uh okay first punch you land you hit me with Carlo uh Joshua I'm gonna lay down and, and cash my five million dollar check after the fight and and, and and live to see another day which is completely a joke I'm just telling uh, if you don't get the dry Seinfeld humor right there but um you know they both gonna do it they both gonna bring it um seventy thousand people packed in this uh this stadium in Cardiff Wales brand new stadium and um you know they eating it up they didn't they riding the Anthony Joshua wave um. His wave might be one of the end up in the in the long run the biggest wave in UK boxing history. You know, I didn't see a lot of people filling out arenas for other fighters like that. They traveled to see Ricky Hatton, they traveled to see Amir Khan, they filled it up for Lennox Lewis and all that stuff. But the difference is he gotta make his mark on America, 
you know, and make a couple appearances in America mm-hmm. like Klitschko do and uh, seal his legacy. Is he beatable, Anthony Joshua? Absolutely. You know, right now, <coughs> excuse me, right now he's beatable. But if they keep letting him learn and get better and, and Rob McCracken keeps working with him, which I like him as a trainer, um, then the sky's the limit for this kid and he's able to get his weight and his muscle down. You know, he said he's been running and doing all this. How about, you know, do a lot lighter weights, um, more reps, and, you know, watch what you're eating, you know. Um, you know, that's pretty much what it is. He's got to come down and weight pretty soon, especially when he started to hit his, his early to mid-30s if he want to continue boxing. He got to cut down that muscle weight because it's not going to be healthy for him. You know what I'm saying? But if that's just his genetic uh, way that he's going to, um, you know, put weight on, well, he's going to be able to, de- he's going to have to deal with it. He's going to sur- he got to work around it and hopefully work through it. But he's most definitely the most exciting heavyweight in the planet, the biggest draw in the heavyweight division on the planet. And, you know, has a big future. And I expect him to stump all over. Carlos take him on his way to a $20 million payday and pretty much jipping the fans off at Cardiff Wheels tomorrow. In a, in a, even with Puev or Carlos Sagan in a lose-lose situation with both of those guys other than a check. But it is what it is. We gone.